Welcome to section 14 of Parasites. This is our parasite overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Strongyloides stercoralis, or threadworm, which you can see right here. This scene will take place by a bodybuilding contest. The guy in the black suit is judging each of the contestants as they flex their muscles. As you can see, each contestant is quite strong, and this is here to help you remember that this image is all about Strongyloides stercoralis. If we zoom up on the bodybuilders, we can see that the girl's sports bra has a bunch of little frayed threads on it. Thread sounds like threadworm, so this part of the image should help you remember that Strongyloides stercoralis is also known as threadworm. If we zoom back out, you can see that we've added a merry-go-round to the scene. This is one of those fairs with several sights to see and activities to participate in, so some people will be enjoying the bodybuilding contest, while others may prefer to ride on the merry-go-round. Just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that Strongyloides stercoralis is a roundworm, or nematode. If we turn our attention back to the judge, we can see that he's dressed in very traditional rabbi clothing. This happens to be a Jewish bodybuilding contest, so the rabbi is the judge here. Anyway, rabbi sounds like rabditiform, so this should help you remember that Strongyloides stercoralis is diagnosed with microscopy, which reveals rabditiform larvae in the feces of those infected. The word rabditiform just refers to the early developmental larval stage of the parasite. This is an image showing a larva of Strongyloides stercoralis, right here which is what may be seen with microscopy when examining the feces of an infected patient. All right, before we go any further, let's take a second to conceptually understand the life cycle of Strongyloides, and then I'll help you memorize the details with the image mnemonic. You should know that Strongyloides larvae can infect the host by penetrating the skin. Once the skin has been penetrated, larvae enter the bloodstream, penetrate the alveoli, ascend the trachea, and descend into the gastrointestinal tract where mature helminths remain. Here, they release eggs into the intestines, and in the case of Strongyloides, some of the eggs hatch inside of the host within the intestines, which we've indicated right here. This is unique because the parasite burden can continue to escalate as more and more parasites take up residence within the gastrointestinal tract. And this cyclic process is termed autoinfection. So remember, Strongyloides can penetrate the skin, which initiates the infection, but it can also cause repeated infections, which is termed autoinfection. Okay, let's return to the image to help you memorize this information. Now you can see that we've added two more characters to the scene. These two people came to support their family members who are participating in the bodybuilding contest. As you can see, the guy is pretty excited to be here, and even brought a confetti popper. The confetti is going up into the air and coming right back down on top of his head. The confetti can be thought of as a symbol for the parasite, so the fact that it's leaving the guy's hand and coming right back down on top of him should make you think of an auto-infection. So Strongyloides stercoralis causes auto-infection. Now we've shown a fun red pool for people to play in over here. The fair decided to add food coloring just to make the pool that much more exciting for any people who got bored of watching the bodybuilding contest. Anyway, notice that the confetti is not only landing back on the guy's head, but it's also floating over to this pool area. Some of the confetti is landing right on this guy's skin with the hose. This is to help you remember that Strongyloides initiates the infection via penetration of the skin. So landing on this guy's skin for penetration of the skin. The hose is our symbol for the intestines, and the red pool is a symbol for the bloodstream. So the fact that the confetti is over in this area should help reinforce the idea that once Strongyloides is inside of the host, it can penetrate the intestinal wall and enter the bloodstream. Okay, now notice that we've shown two more people who are taking off their shoes and getting ready to get into the pool. You can even see a nice little box where customers can store their shoes. If you look at the guy standing up, you can see that he's about to put his loafer shoes into the box. This is here to help you remember that Strongyloides stercoralis causes Loeffler syndrome. If we return to this image, you can see that as Strongyloides penetrates the alveoli, it can cause Loeffler syndrome, which is characterized by a cough, wheezing, and eosinophilia. All right, let's finish by discussing treatment. Notice that most of the contestants are flexing their muscles by bending something. Two of them are bending phones, which should make you think of bendazol. So Strongyloides can be treated with bendazols. However, one of the contestants is bending an ivory elephant tusk. The word ivory should make you think of ivermectin. So Strongyloides can also be treated with ivermectin. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 31-year-old female presents to the physician due to a chronic cough. She states that she first noticed the cough approximately one year ago after traveling to Thailand. Physical examination reveals a high-pitched sound over both lung fields best heard during expiration. A complete blood cell count reveals elevated levels of eosinophils, but is otherwise normal. Stool examination reveals an absence of parasitic eggs. This patient's condition can be best characterized by which of the following? A. Disruption of granuloma formation. B. 
hyperplasia and hypertrophy of respiratory goblet cells, C, penetration of the alveoli by a parasite, or D, non-caseating granulomas. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient developed a cough one year ago after traveling to Thailand. The physical exam description of high-pitched sounds is describing wheezing. The CBC with elevated levels of eosinophils is suggestive of a parasite infection. However, the stool examination didn't reveal any parasitic eggs, which may have thrown you off. We'll talk about this in a second, but this does not rule out a parasite infection. So this patient has Loeffler syndrome, and the correct answer is C, penetration of the alveoli by a parasite. From the diagram, recall that strongyloides penetrates the skin, which likely happened while this patient was visiting Thailand. From here, the larva entered the bloodstream and then penetrated the alveoli, causing pulmonary symptoms. Then the organism ascended the trachea and descended into the GI tract where the mature parasite remained. However, strongyloides is unique because the eggs released from the mature helminth hatch within the intestines. So the eggs are released in the intestines, and then they hatch inside of the host in the intestines. Here they can penetrate the gastrointestinal wall and migrate into the bloodstream, causing the cycle to repeat itself. Therefore, the unique life cycle of strongyloides means it can cause repeated bouts of Loeffler syndrome, whereas Ascaris lumbricoides and hookworms, which you can see over here, will only cause a brief, short-lived episode of Loeffler syndrome that resolves within the first few weeks of the infection. Again, pay special attention to the diagram. Notice that the strongyloides stercoralis eggs hatch inside of the host's intestines. This means that unlike Ascaris lumbricoides and hookworms, eggs will not be detected in the stool. However, strongyloides larvae will be detected in the stool. So some of the larvae remain in the intestines, causing autoinfection, and some are excreted in the stool, which can be useful for diagnosing the infection. From the image, recall that the confetti going up into the air and coming back down on this guy's head right here should help you remember that strongyloides can cause autoinfection. Also, the loafer shoes over here should help you remember that strongyloides can cause Loeffler syndrome. A is a reference to secondary TB, but this typically presents with weight loss, fevers, night sweats, and hemoptysis, so this is unlikely. B is a reference to pathological findings of COPD, and while this can cause a chronic cough and wheezing, it's not associated with eosinophilia, so B is incorrect. Finally, D is a reference to the pathological findings of sarcoidosis, which can cause pulmonary findings, but again, is not typically associated with eosinophilia, so D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C penetration of the alveoli by a parasite. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about strongyloides stercoralis.